This is a guide for students who've just finished their IGCSE and ready to take their A-levels. It gives you an overview of A-level biology. It helps you to choose the right exam board. It would also give you study tips for the exam. I'll start with an overview of A-level biology. The overview we have here is taken from Edexcel A-level biology, but the content is quite very similar for all exam boards. So for Edexcel A-level biology, you have six units, three of which are for AS and the other three are for A2, the combination of AS and A2 is what we call A-level biology. Unit 1 is divided into three main components. The first component is about biological molecule. This means you study about protein, lipids, and DNA. You also study about carbohydrates. The second component is about cardiovascular system, meaning you study about the structure of the heart, blood vessels. In addition, you study about cardiovascular disease. There's a third component in Unit 1 which talks about genetic disorders. How are these disorders inherited? Something like albinism or cystic fibrosis. Unit 2 is also divided it into three main components. There is a first part about ecology. You study about habitats, pollution. You also have another component about cells, meaning you study about bacterial, prokaryotic, and eukaryotic cells. The third part is about natural selection and evolution. Unit three is the practical unit. So you have an alternative to practical unit where you take experiments from both units one and unit two, and you apply them here in unit three. This means we're done with the AS part of A-level biology. We're now going to the A2 biology, which is the second and last part. For A2 biology, we do have three units. We start with unit four. Unit four is about photosynthesis. So there is a large part at the beginning about plant nutrition photosynthesis. The second part is about the immunity, bacteria, and viruses. And the third component is a continuation of what we started in unit two about ecology, evolution, and natural selection. In addition, you do have a small part about global warming. Unit five is arguably the longest and the most interesting unit from a-level biology. Unit 5 talks about respiration. There's another part about homeostasis in humans. There's also a third part that talks about gene technology. Quite similar to Unit 3, Unit 6 is another practical unit. It takes practicals from all of the six units and applies them in this particular component of the A-level biology. The two main exam boards for A-level biology are Cambridge and Edexcel. Now, Cambridge is the choice taken by many schools worldwide because it's an old exam board. But if you have the choice to choose, or if you're home studying, I would always ask you to choose Edexcel. There are many, many advantages of Edexcel over Cambridge. One of the main advantages is that Edexcel has a modular system, meaning you have six units. You can always improve any of these components or any of these units separately without the need to repeat the entire subject. So for example, there was one student who did very well in all of his exams, but he didn't do very well in unit six. So he only had to repeat this particular component he didn't have to repeat the entire subject like what we have in the case of Cambridge because in Cambridge you have to repeat the entire subject if you are to improve your grade. There's another advantage of Edexcel is the fact that you could have the entire exam done outside of a school. So you don't have to join a school to do Edexcel biology. The reason is because the practical exams are alternative to practical, meaning you have a written exam. That's not the case with Cambridge because in Cambridge you have to go into an actual practical exam. This exam is not the easiest exam and requires special training in a school. So you really have to join a school for you to do the Cambridge practical exam of paper three. Another advantage of Edexcel is the fact that you can do the entire A-level in one year. So many of my students start their exams in October, November of the first year. Then they do their exam in January of the second year. So let's say they started October, November, 2023. They can do two other units in January, 2024, and they finish up the entire subject by May and June of 2024. That's not the case with Cambridge because in Cambridge, we only have two exam sessions. You have one in May and June, and you have another exam session where you are to improve your grades in October and November. Another great advantage of Edexcel is the content. The content or the materials you have to study are quite less than what you have in Cambridge. So if you just put both specifications next to each other, you realize that Edexcel's specification is quite shorter. So that gives you more time to focus on the smaller materials you have in the case of Edexcel. The last advantage, which is quite 
as important as the rest is the curve. Now, the great boundaries of Edexcel are quite low. So if you just take a look here at the last exam session in January 2023, students could possibly score an A with just 37 out of 80. Now, that's really low curve. Note that the highest grade you can score in AS is an A. Uh, if you are to score an A star, then you have to add up all of the grades of your AS and of your A2. Here I'll answer some of your questions. Many students ask me, is A-level biology difficult to study? The answer is not really. Many students score full marks in their biology exam. This is taken from January 23. You can see they scored full mark 120 from 120 in their unit one and unit two exam. Now, those students know how they study. 90% of my students last exam session, they scored either A or A star in their A-level biology. Now, I'll tell you how did these students actually prepare for their exam. Now, the very first thing you need to keep in mind is you need to have the right resources to study from. Now, you have three options here. You have the textbook from Edexcel. You have a study guide. You can also make your notes. Now, the textbook is very good as a reference. The problem is that textbook has a lot of details. You don't need all of these details for your exam and it's going to take you a lot of time to go over all of these materials. The second option is the study guide. CGP makes very good study guides to study for your exam, but the problem, they have to apply for your exam board. So for instance, if you're doing international advanced level or IAL, then CGP didn't make a, a study guide for your actual exam board. The third option is to compile notes in one resource, like one of my students has done here. She has put all notes from the class. Uh, she added some extra notes from the textbook and she has all of the resources in one place, but that takes a lot of time. For that reason, I have made textbook of notes for students worldwide. This book is available in the form of an ebook. Uh, the way I've done this book is based on the exam materials, meaning all of the information you have here are taken from the mark scheme, but they're written in a way that the student can read and understand. As you can see, I put those key terms you find in the mark scheme, so you can always build your answer around these key terms. You have the definitions. You also have the practicals, those you require for unit three and unit six. I've been teaching A-level biology for the past 15 years. I want to give you tips on how you could prepare for your exam in an effective way. First thing, find an explanation of the main concept. Sometimes it's not easy to understand from the textbook. So find an explanation, whether if it's from your school teacher or from a YouTube video, but it has to be related to your exam board. Another thing is that you need to be shown how to answer questions. I try my best in my lessons to show the students the best way to write answers. I usually write up the keywords and I build the answers around these keywords. One last issue with the explanation is that it needs to be related to your learning style. Different people learn in different ways. So if you're like a visual person, it'd be very helpful to be shown the processes in the form of animations. Like here, I'm trying to show the students the process of crossing over. So I made up this animation to show exactly how this process takes place. The next step is to solve questions related to the topic that you have taken. While solving, keep track of the mistakes that you have done so that you don't do that mistake once again. I usually provide my students with written answers of most exam questions so that they could check the right way of writing these answers. Try to test yourself once you're done with each topic. So you're done with biological molecules, take a test about this topic. And while marking, try to give yourself the marks that you deserve. Ideally, you need to find a teacher or an expert to check your answer and give you exactly the marks that you... Once you're done with the entire unit, start doing full exam papers. I always ask my students to do the old exam papers first and then start doing the new ones. This is an example of an exam paper schedule that I've done for my students. So I asked them first to do the 2019, uh, to do it first with open book, meaning while they're solving, they're using the book, they're using their notes, but then you really need to start pacing yourself. So start doing the exam and check how much it takes you to finish the entire exam paper. Ideally, you should be able to finish the exam paper 10 to 15 minutes before the time allocated for this exam. So you can still have time to revise this exam at the end. I hope that this was useful. Feel free to ask me questions by email or WhatsApp. I'll try my best to answer you as soon as possible.